Hi everybody and welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to show you a new project I'm working on. This is a very super portable version of ECB rack. Actually it's Cardinal. I already have one in my Euro rack. It's, like, it's this one. Uh, it's a project I made a few months ago. You can find the video in the, up here. But this is going to be bigger. It's a 10 uh, inches screen. It's a touch screen and I'm going to use it to perform live. So let me just unmute it. So this is basically it. It's very small, it's ultra portable. I can fit it in my hand. It was just a uh, raspberry on the back, on the mouse at the moment, and a connection for a PSU. And I'm going to use it to perform live because you can zoom it and you can, of course, use the knobs as it were a real Eurorack model. I will use it probably in conjunction with some other modules, some other regular Eurorack stuff. But first, a shopping list. First, you're gonna need a Raspberry Pi PI. I decided to go for the most powerful that we can have at the moment. It's a Raspberry Pi 5 with 16 gigabytes of memory. I think that a Raspberry Pi 5 with 8 gig will do the work. Uh, my other module, my Eurorack module, is using a 8 gigabyte. I don't really recommend to use a Raspberry 4. I've tested with Raspberry 4 with 4 gigabyte. It works. Uh, it can load patches, but only very small patches. So if you're going to use a quite a complex patch, maybe a self-generative patch, it will probably not work. But you can do it. You can use it for most basic stuff, maybe 5 to 10 modules, it will end, depending, of course, on, on the kind of module that you're going to have. So um, the Raspberry Pi 5, 16 gigabyte at the moment is about 120 uh, euros. If you decide to go for 8 gigabyte, it's probably between 70 and 80 euros. And if you want to have, of course, a Raspberry Pi 4, it's about 40 or maybe less. You can find them used uh, very often. Then you will need a touchscreen, and this touchscreen comes from AliExpress. You can find the link in the description. It's an affiliate link. If you want to buy one, I will get some a little bit of cent, a bit of money. And it's a very nice touch display. Uh, I still have the plastic on at the moment, of course, because I'm still it's still under development, but it's working very good. And this costs about 45 euros plus shipping. So including shipping, you're going to be around 60 euros probably. And basically it's it. You will need a SD card, of course, but you can find any SD card, maybe for 10 euros. Actually, the size of the SD card doesn't really matter. You can think, uh, get around from four gigabytes up to 64. I'm using a 64 image right now, but they have plenty of space. So probably an eight gigabytes SD card will be more than enough. So that's it. So we're gonna be spending about 200 euros for, for the whole project. So let's start by unboxing the screen and then making the connection and then using the Mac or the computer or the PC to install everything on the Raspberry Pi. Open the box and don't throw away the leaflets because there is a QR code with a comprehensive guide. So this is the screen after the box. Then on the bottom of the box, there are all the accessories. We have the feet, we have com connectors, we have speakers, and we have cables if you want to use it with, uh, as an external monitor for a standard PC. Mounting the Raspberry is really straightforward. There are some spaces included in the box and screws and screwdriver, and you simply screw everything in place. Then you will need to have the included connector uh, for the HDMI, which is a mini HDMI to a standard HDMI, because the screen has a standard HDMI, and a USB to micro USB for the touch con components. So you connect both. You see I'm connecting here the USB to the small USB on the screen, and then the HDMI. If you like, you can use the included speakers it's straightforward, you simply peel them off and then you connect the two cables to the respective connectors on the board. And the hardware mounting part is complete. I have also attached some heatsink on the Raspberry, but that's it.
For the software part, you simply need to download the Raspberry Pi OS, which is compatible with all current models. And I recommend you downloading the Raspberry Pi with desktop option and not with recommended software because you're just going to waste space. So you click on download and you download it basically. And then you need to burn the image on the SD card. You can use Balena Etcher on PC or Mac or any other image burning. You select the image, you open it, you select the target, just make sure you select the correct disk and not one of your portable disks, for example, and then you simply click on flash. And the whole process will probably take between two or three minutes, so I'm gonna, of course, speed up the process of the burning. And whenever you start the Raspberry Pi for the first time, it will ask you to create a user, to select your password, to set up your zone, your keyboard, your time zone, and stuff like that, which I'm not covering into detail because it's really straightforward. And for the rest part of this tutorial, you can either work directly on your Raspberry, just using a keyboard and a mouse, or you can connect it remotely, but first you need to enable SSH. I prefer the second option because I can work on my Mac. You can do, of course, the same on PC and connect remotely to your Raspberry. So you simply enable SSH by clicking on the Raspberry icon, then Preferences, then Control Center, and then Interfaces, and then you select and you enable SSH as you see in the video. And the following SSH part is not needed if you're going to work directly on your Raspberry. So you type SSH, your username, at and the IP address of your Raspberry. And then you will simply need to provide your Raspberry Pi password. And so we are in. If you're working on Windows, you can not use Terminal, but you can use a specific software which is called Putty, which is a freeware, of course. And again, if you're going to work directly on your Raspberry, this is not needed. And again, this is not probably mandatory, but if you're using my screen, the recommended configuration is in the config file. So you edit the file by sudo nano boot firmware config.txt. And then you need to make sure to add at the end of the file some specific command which I will give you in the description, which enable the HDMI, they will force HDMI audio and they will set up the touch display. The next step is to install the repository, so you need to do it on your Raspberry, even if you're not going to use SSH. Again, you need, simply need to execute some command to update software sources and then to install prerequisite and then to install repository. It's very straightforward. Again, I will put the link in the description to the official Cardinal repositories and you need to execute what's on that page. And the final part will be to install Cardinal. So you go to the Raspberry icon, preferences, add remove programs. You search for distro with an H Cardinal, which are the distribution that we installed previously and you should find a couple of packages, in my case they are already installed and selected, and you select Cardinal Native, which should be the first one, and then also Cardinal Data. Of course, you want to install also the plugin, you can do that, but in order to have a standalone version, I simply need Cardinal Native. And then you will find Cardinal by going into your folders, going into the bean directory, and you will find Cardinal there you should execute Cardinal Native or you can move it to the desktop like I did because it's just easier and then you simply double click on Cardinal Native to open it. And so let's listen to some patches. You can of course use the touch screen to zoom in and out to move, but it's a little bit complicated, so maybe for the zooming it's better to use a mouse or a, sty or a stylus, but then you can use the finger to drag your controls. And the touch screen supports multi-touch gestures, but unfortunately PCV Rack or Carnilla does not, so you can, for example, pinch to zoom, you need to use the zoom menu, but then you are able to move the different controls and different knobs using your fingers.
Yeah, and that's it for today. So I will use this small setup probably on Saturday. I will play at the Modular, Modular Festival here in Italy and I will be performing using this one and maybe just some additional Eurorack models. And if you like the video, please subscribe and hit the notification bell and like the video and stay tuned for more videos about VCV Rack and not only that. See you, bye bye.